Hey folks, if you received the card with the GeoGebra sign on it, or if you've been assigned to the GeoGebra task of this building day, then this is what we're going to try to make together. Uh, so you've opened a GeoGebra file, and go ahead and file, save it as something. Um, so how about save as, hopefully you're saving it to the cloud somewhere. And I'm just going to call this my unit circle file. Uh, let's check out these circle tools. Circle with a center through a point. Circle with a center through a radius. They want a circle with a particular radii. So let's go ahead and make a segment first then. I would like a point at the origin. And from the origin, I'd like a segment that's one unit long. So we'll go to a segment tool, but let's make it segment with a given length. It now asks you how long. We're saying one. And now we can go to the circle tool and circle um, with a center through a point. I'm just going to hover over that so you can see that the instructions for this tool are to select a center point and then a point on the circle. Well, we have both of those things here in AB. So here's my center point and here's my point on the circle. So I now have a circle with a radius of one, so I don't need that one. Um, I'm going to go to Options and turn off the new labeling because that's going to kind of get in our way. So go ahead and turn off your No New Objects labeling. And I'm going to turn off the label simply by right-clicking on the figures over here in the Algebra bar. I'm going to go to Show Label, which will turn off the label. And turn off the label for Segment 1. I'm going to move this to the center, and now I'm going to zoom in on it to make it a little easier to work with. Cool, I like that. And I can turn off the grid by using the Move tool. I'm right-clicking on the background and turning off the grid. But I'm not sure that I don't want that. So let's leave it on for now. I'm going to the back arrow right here. So what I'd like is those points on the circle that mark 45 degree angles and um, all multiples of 45 degree angles. So that's going to be somewhere in here. A couple of ways to find that place, but Let's try just using angle with a given measure. Uh, not just the angle tool, let's do angle with a given size. Hover over it, it tells us that we select a leg point, then a vertex point, and then enter the size. I'm not completely certain whether it's going to go down here or up here. I feel like it's going to land down here, um, but maybe not. Let's see. I'm selecting point B. I'm selecting the center, and I would like a 45 degree angle. Oh, it's going to tell me, counterclockwise or clockwise? Uh, I think that this will be clockwise to land in quadrant one, but let's find out. No. Ah, I get it. So it's moving clockwise down the arc, or down the circumference. I thought there it might be moving clockwise in this direction. So, okay, but that works. I can now do two things. I can do the very same thing again, angle with a given point, and now go counterclockwise, or I can use the reflect over the line tool, I'll reflect this figure over this line, and now it lands over here. Well, that was just a couple of clicks, so let's do that again, reflect this figure over this line. And now I have some of the multiples of 
45, but I need a couple of more. Uh, so I need the multiple that lands here and here at 180 and at 270. Well, I can just add a point to that. So let's find um, a point. I'm hovering over the area where I want the point to land because I want to make sure that this box tells me it's on the circle and it's on the y-axis, and, and, and it is. And I want to hover not just until I get the circle, but also until I get the x-axis here. And I'm doing that again. I'm going to aim for that point that looks like both, and I'm not going to click until I have both highlighted in that box because I want all these parts to stay together. And now when I move, none of them will drag off. So I'm going to the Move tool to make sure they won't drag left or right or up or down. Uh, I'll show you what it would look like. Um, this is just a point on the circle, but what if I felt like I got my point on the circle and it had landed also on my axis? I'd be able to drag that point around, which I don't want. I don't want to be able to do that. I want these points to stick like crazy, which is what they're doing. So I'm going to test these down here to make sure they're stuck to the circle and to that angle at 180 plus 45. And now I want to make sure this one is stuck at this angle, which is 360 minus 45. And I want to make sure 45 is stuck. Um, yeah, that's that's working really well. I don't really need this object to be on right now, so I'm going to clean this up and turn it off. These become important reference angles. I just want to create a segment here, not a segment with a given length. Let's just go ahead and connect the center to the points we created on the circle. And we're now looking at our three angles that are reference angles to 45. So what has really happened here is we've created congruent triangles that can be used in terms of the measures, because they're all going to be the same. Um, right now they are sectors of a circle, but if we were to build this perpendicular line through this point here, perpendicular to the axis, oops, sorry, I got a segment, not a perpendicular line. Through this point, perpendicular to the x-axis, uh, then that allows me to create the triangles. I'm going to turn off the line I made and create a segment here and here. So we have a lot of cool parts that are going to help us to measure around the unit circle. Would it be fair to add uh, a label here? So we're going to go to point B and right click on it. And we're going to go to the properties of point B. And we're going to add a caption. And that caption is going to be 45 degrees over here under what I think is an alpha tab. Uh, we're going to look for degrees. There it is. And now we will want to show the caption. There we go. We've got 45 there. Excellent. Okay. We're off to a good start. Whoops. Don't put a segment in there. Uh, if I want to drag something to make it more visible, I have to use the move tool. Okay. So those are our 45s and our multiples of 45. How about our multiples of 30? Angle with a given size tool. from B to A. I'd like to go 30 degrees, so let's go up into quadrant one on the first try this time. We're going to go counterclockwise. So there's my 30 degree angle, and I can just keep going 30 degrees all the way around the circle. This is 
just going to give me another point here at 0, 1. So I'm going to go just take the jump over to 60 this time because I don't need another point at 0, 1. Each time I'm making sure that I'm really going through the center because I don't want any of these to be inaccurate. Go another 30. Move all the way around. I don't need another one at 180. So I'm, so I'm going to go 60 this time. Each time uh, it's giving me the same distance on the segment, which is why it lands on the circle each time. So you're starting to kind of anticipate where these points are going to land on the circle. Uh, so think about what I'm going to, how far I'm going to send it this time. Am I going to send it 30? I don't need another point at 270. So let's go ahead and go 60. And we do need one more at 330. So let's go 30 on this one. Okay. So far, so good. And let's go ahead and remove these angles in the center. Um, actually, yeah, I can just turn them off. They don't take my points away, I don't think. They just take away the labels in the center, which are all kind of on top of each other. So my points are good. And I just press the blue button over here in the algebra tool to make those points go away. Let's add a couple of segments to define this 30 degree angle here. Uh, so there's quadrant one, which is on its way to looking like a unit circle. Uh, let's put in a caption at point B. Where's degrees? There it is. Highlighted for me. Show that caption. And I'm going to have you work around all of these points just adding a caption for the degree measure. I'll work with you until my 15 minute video runs out and then we'll pick up in part two. So make it all the way around the circle, adding the degree measure in this first picture of the unit circle. <laughs> 